Hi, I'm Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it, we're looking at the fourth online quiz for Chapter 11 on Correlation and Regression. The first question is, which of the following illustrates a negative correlation? A, the more often a person exercises, the more muscle mass they will accumulate. B, as a person writes less, the quality of their writing decreases. C, the less often a person gets sick, the less sick days they would need to take off work. Or D, the more often a person visits the dentist, the fewer cavities they have. The answer here is D, the more often a person visits the dentist, the fewer cavities they have. And the reason it's a negative correlation is because as the first one goes up, more dentist visits, the second one goes down, fewer cavities. Uh, a, B, and C are actually all positive correlations. Um, more exercise, more muscle mass. So more of one, more of the other, that's positive. B is, is phrased a different way. It says less of one, but it also means less of the other. That's a positive correlation. And then uh, same thing with C, less of one, less of the other. It's a positive correlation, even though it's worded in a sort of a negative sense. It's just low goes with low and high goes with high. And in fact, I'm just going to refer you to the table that's in the text that talks about as scores on X go up or down and scores on a Y go up and down and talks about how it's shaped, whether it's positive, and who goes with whom. So anyhow, the idea here is when you have more of one, it means more of the other, that's a positive. It can also be phrased as less of one, less of the other, it's positive. It's, um, I'm sorry, this one, more of one, less of the other, is negative, and that's what we were looking for here. All right, second one. If R equals 0.65, then the members in the sample who have blank values on the independent variable have blank values on the dependent variable. Well, 0.65 is a positive correlation, and so the choices are no relationship and higher and lower, lower and higher, and lower and lower. Well, positive associations, you usually think of them as high means goes with high, but it also means that low goes with low, and so D is the correct answer. A is there's no relationship at all, but 65 is definitely a, a correlation. And then B and C are both negative correlations because it flips around the sign from one to the other. And again, I'll refer you to the same table that shows about how the negative and the positive go together. Please make sure you understand this because the, there's several questions about negative correlations on the departmental final. I want to make sure you get to the right. All right, number three, what's the predicted value of y when x is equal to 120 using this equation? So y is equal to minus 350 plus 5 times x. The choices are 475, 950, 250, or can't be determined without additional information. The answer is 250, and here's how you get it. You just plug the 120 into the x, and remember, because of order of operations, you want to do the multiplication first. So 5 times 120 is 600. And then you're going to combine that with minus 350, and that gives you a total of 250, and that's the answer. Number four, the vertical distance between a person's predicted score on Y and their actual score on Y is called blank, and it signifies blank. And the choices are residual and error in prediction, or B, standard error and error in measurement, or the deviation, and the average of how far you score is from the regression line, or D, displacement and regression to the mean. The answer is A, the residual and error in prediction. In fact, this should be pretty easy because the symbol for the residual is E, which stands for error. And here's the formula. We've got E, so the error score, or the residual for person I, you number them from one to however many, and you just use I as a generic stand-in for one, two, three, four. You take their, their observed score, which is Y sub I, and you subtract their predicted score, and that's the, the carrot, the hat over the uh, y means that's a predicted value, and that's the residual, just the difference between those two. Last one, which statistic is defined as the proportion of variance accounted in the dependent variable by the independent variable? And the choices are chi-squared, range, r-squared, or mode. Well, the answer here is r-squared. That should actually be pretty simple because we haven't even talked about chi-squared yet. And the range is a measure of uh, variation, and the mode's a measure of central tendency. But just remember, R squared, now I could show you formulas for this, but we want to deal with it primarily conceptually. And what it says is, if you have the same data set, and we've got the, the green dots are the same on the left and the right here, and we had these in the, in the lecture. If you're going just from the mean of Y, which is what we have on the left, you get these big variations. Everybody's real far away from the mean of Y. 
but when you can use a regression line to make a better um, prediction by angling it, you see that the deviations, which are the residuals here, are much smaller. And the R squared has to do with the reduction in this distance uh, between them. And the more you reduce it, the bigger your R squared and the better your prediction. Anyhow, that is it for chapter four. Thanks.